Hello, my name is Lawrence, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Cisco 7941 with FreeDBX. I got a lot of feedback from my previous video showing me using the phone connected to FreeDBX successfully, and I had a lot of people asking for a guide. So here is that guide. One thing to add to this is it does work on any Cisco phone. It works on the Cisco 7975, 7941, any Cisco phone that is within the 7900 range. Okay, so let's start. So I got this phone here off eBay. Um, as soon as you get your phone, make sure to reset it. And I'm gonna go ahead and go through that process. So the first step to resetting is go ahead and plug in your power. If you have PoE or just standard power, just go ahead and plug it in. So I have PoE, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reach around back, plug it in, and then immediately start holding the pound button. This is gonna go ahead and initiate the reset mode that we are looking for. This does take a second. What we're doing now, this whole process is upgrading to the SIP firmware because FreePBX is SIP and Cisco's phones by default run with their equipment. And of course, we want to use FreePBX instead of their equipment. So just go ahead and keep holding that pound button. So once you're here at this screen, you'll have these flashing lights. Go ahead and type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star, zero, pound. The phone will go ahead and boot, and you will see this upgrading screen. If you got your phone used off eBay, you will most likely have already seen the screen before. What this screen is doing is trying to find a server um, locally to grab its SIP um, firmware files. Um, if you are in an organization, it will automatically grab them from the organization's server. So I'm gonna be showing you how to set this up. So our second step will be creating a TFTP server that will allow the phone to get its configuration files and its firmware files. I'm using TFTPD 64 or 32. I will have download links to this program in the description below. All right, so once you have this program downloaded, just go ahead and wait with it there. And now go to Cisco's website and try to locate your phone's firmware files. So just go to software.cisco.com and go to Downloads Home, IP Phones, find your IP phone, and then go on Firmware. Once you're here on this firmware page, go ahead and find the correct firmware. I'm using 8.4 in parentheses 1, and that is working great for me for my Cisco 7941. Downloading these files, you do need an account login. You can create a free account with Cisco. Make sure when you download it that it says SIP. IP phone firmware files only. Make sure it says that because if you're using the other ones, you're just going to get the firmware that is only compatible with Cisco's equipment. This firmware will allow you to use it with any equipment. Downloading these files are super easy. Like I said, just go ahead and click the download button and it's going to say login is required. Go ahead and click login and you can go ahead and create a new account for free. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my existing one and show you how to download it. All right, so I have now signed in, as you can see at the top. Now I can go ahead and download the files. Clicking download and clicking accept. Well, let me download the files. Once you have the file downloaded, go ahead and make a new folder on your desktop. Go ahead and drag the file in there and go ahead and extract the file. Now you have the firmware files in here. This will be the spot where we're going to go ahead and point our TFTP server to on where it grabs its files from, as now in here, there are the proper firmware files for the phone to use. Our next step will be going into Control Panel, Network and Internet, Network and Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings, Ethernet, Properties, IPP4, and use the following IP address. This is going to go ahead and specify that we are the TFTP server that it should use. So go ahead and type in the IP address 192.168.0.1 and 255 255 255.0 and go ahead and click OK. OK again and close. Go ahead and exit out of this and go ahead and go into your TFTP 64 or 32. Once you are in here, go ahead and go to settings and go ahead and go into DHCP. All right, go ahead and put in 192.168.0.2, then go ahead and do down and go three. Type in 192.168.0.1, 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 .255 .0. 
and go ahead and click OK. Then we're going to go ahead and browse for where our files are. Now go ahead and click on the top and go browse and go ahead and find that file folder we just made. Click OK. Now go ahead and go down here and select 192.168.0.1. Now the TFTP server is ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and take the Ethernet cable of our phone and plug it into the back of our computer. Just stick it around my computer and plug it into the Ethernet port. As you can see, now the phone's connected to the computer. I'm plugging the phone back in right now, as you can see. So since it's reset right now, it's going to go ahead and boot up and go back to the upgrading screen. And the upgrading screen will now have the ability, since it's plugged in and we have a TFTP server running, it will go ahead and find those files. We're gonna go and wait for the phone to boot up and I'll be back to you when it's up. All right, I am now at the upgrading screen of my phone. It may take a second for anything to show up on the log viewer. So go ahead and be patient as it may take a couple seconds. As you can see here on the log viewer, there are files getting transferred successfully and the phone is downloading the files successfully. As we can see, as they are getting checked off, Again, coming back to here, the files are coming over just fine. All right, as we can see, this is SIP, as it says SIP right here. All right, it may almost be done now. As you can see now, it is rebooting. We're gonna go ahead and wait for it to boot up. All right, so after waiting just probably 30 seconds, the phone has successfully booted up. We will see in a second that it will say unprovisioned at the bottom of the screen. As we can see, it's configuring its IP address. As we can see now, it is unprovisioned. So the phone is not successfully in SIP. When we can check this is going into the settings. Oops. Clicking settings. Scrolling down and clicking model information. And we can say that it, we can see that it is saying call SIP. So you're now using the SIP version. Now, of course, we want to get further than this because this is boring and we like to actually use it with our FreePBX. But this part here shows that we have successfully upgraded to SIP. Now, go ahead and take your phone and unplug it from your computer and plug it back into your regular network. So I'm now unplugging the phone from my computer and plugging it back into my network switch. That's connected to my network. As we see, it is configuring its IP on my local network. So what we can go ahead and do is go to settings now, network, IPv4 configuration, and we can see that it now has an IP address. Now, if you try going to this IP addresses like many other phones, you cannot change anything at this web GUI. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, so go ahead and go back to control panel. Go back to your network internet, network sharing center. Go to Ethernet, Properties, IVP4, and you can now change this back to obtain IP address automatically. And now with your computer connected back to its local network, it will now have an IP address on your local network. All right, now in the description of the video, you will see the XML config files. Go ahead and click on that and download that. You will get these two files. Go ahead and copy them and paste them in the folder that the TFTP is pointed to. So I'm pasting it where the firmware files are. There will be a file that says SCP in parentheses MAC address here .cnf. This file contains a lot of the information that will be used to connect to your FreePBX. The MAC address here will have to be replaced with your phone's MAC address. So you can obtain the MAC address on the back of your phone I use a barcode scanner, so I don't have to type in the long numbers, but you can just type it in with your keyboard. So in the end, my file would look like this. SCP002, the whole MAC address, .cnf. Once you have renamed the file to your MAC address, go ahead and click on it and go ahead and click edit. Now, you will see this text file. This text file is what is going to be used to tell the phone where your FreePBX is and information about your FreePBX. You will see here in stars on where you should put in information like your FreePBX server IP address as we scroll further down. You'll also see whatever you want to have displayed on your phone, extension number, and password. 
All right, I just created an extension on my FreePBX for this phone. And all I need to do now is type in that stuff here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I just did that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna show you that I have my IP address here. That's my IP address on my FreePBX. And scrolling down, I also have my line set up. So I have 2009, which is the extension. And I also have the password 1234567289. Now, I recommend going with a short password as I have experienced problems where if the password is too long, for example, when it's auto-generated auto by FreePBX, it does not work. If your FreePBX is not port forwarded, this should not be an issue at all. So if it's local, this should be fine. But I have mine set as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're all set to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click file and save. So now the phone is ready to grab its files. So as we can see here, the dial plan file we will leave alone. This dial plan specifies what will happen when you are dialing something on the keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our phone. Now back in TFTP64, go ahead and go to settings, DHCP, and clear out this as this is no longer needed. So we'll just go ahead and take all that out. Click OK. Once we are back at our phone, we're going to go ahead and click on settings, network settings, IVP4. And we're going to go ahead and go all the way down until it says alternate TFTP. Now, right now you can see there's no option to do yes. So go ahead and type star star pound. This will go ahead and unlock the menu. We can go ahead and click yes. Then we're going to go ahead and scroll down to TFTP server one, click edit and we're gonna go ahead and put in the IP address of the computer running the TFTP server. If you are not sure what your computer's IP address is, go ahead and type in ipconfig and click enter. And you will see that my IP address is 192.168.1.73. So over at the phone, we're gonna go ahead and type in 192.168.1.73. And we're gonna go ahead and click validate. And then we're gonna go ahead and click save. So after we clicked saved on the phone, I went ahead and rebooted the phone. So after you put in the TFTP server, reboot the phone, and you will see that the phone will now request the files. So if we go over here and we wait a second, we will see that it's requesting the files. Alrighty, there we go, look at that. We are all registered. And we can go ahead and see on the TFTP server that it's transferred all those files correctly. And now we can go ahead and make a test call and we will see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 93, which is my voicemail system. Comedian mail. Mailbox. There you go. You have now successfully configured your Cisco IP phone to connect to FreePBX and make calls. We can also receive calls. So I'm going to go ahead and call the phone. Voila. And you can go ahead and pick up the phone and have a conversation. Thank you so much for watching. If you do need any help, do not hesitate to reach out to me on Discord. I will have that linked below, along with all of the files I used in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck.